assistance from the Food and Beverage Department. Speaking to General Manager Peter Fraser, he said it is something the Sanders brand do, lending support to any new resort. The purpose, he said, is to teach new staff what goes into the opening of a new hotel. He spoke of the areas in which the Grenada contingent will be involved. Well, you have to, and we have over 20 sandals, and what we have done, we have taken four or five team, team talents from all the sandals to descend. This is what we do every time we open a new uh, property. We, we take team members from, other, from, from, from the other hotels. Just to give them a tip of how you open a hotel, you know, what, what goes into opening a hotel how you get things ready, yes, there are going to be teeth and, teeth and pains, and since the staff are going to be brand new to Sanders and Barbados, we're going to send some of the more sandalized staff to show them how to the Sanders way. The participants will spend the next three months in Barbados. Mr. Fraser said there will be an exchange of talent from time to time. He sees this as a means of giving persons exposure in various areas. Ms. Clarista Hiller, employed with Sanders Grenada over a year, said she feels very honored to have been chosen to be representing the hardworking team at the resort. Well, I must say that I'm very honored and excited knowing that I'm from a team that where we all work really hard and that I was chosen to represent Grenada, I'm feeling really lucky going out there sharing my knowledge, skills, creativity with brothers and sisters on the earth side so that we all can be on one page and at the end let everyone say that Sandals is the best as always. I think I'm chosen as a representative of my team because my success is their success because we really work well as a team and we took their support I will not have been a success today. She hopes to impart her knowledge with her counterparts in Barbados and share her experience when she returns. For GIS News, I'm Christalina John reporting. Thank you, Christalina. Nine Calypsonians have been selected to challenge defending Independence Calypso monarch Sean Sousup Niles in the upcoming Independence Calypso show. Making it to the big stage are African Teller, Gunn, Sheldon Douglas, Denson Lewis, Teacher Eddie, Rootsman Kelly, Stunner, White Man, and Lady Cheryl. Ja Angel is on standby. The show will be held on January 31st at the Satez Bus Terminus from 7 p.m. That's news. Sports is next. When the British and French arrived, it was colonial. When the Americans landed, it was revolutionary. In April, English cricketers lead an army of fans on an invasion of Grenada. England versus West Indies, National Stadium St. George's. This time, it's the economy. Hi, I am Junior Murray. Let's keep our athletes and sports clean. No dope in sports.
AB de Villiers smashes records at the one day series between the West Indies and South Africa in South Africa. We had to compete in the inaugural Green Island football tournament in St. Vincent and Grenadines in March. Johnson Charles slams a big hundred to inspire the Green Islands to a big win over the Barbadian team in the Najiko 50 overs competition on Monday. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. West Indies player Johnson Charles slammed an entertaining 177 to inspire the United Islands to a comfortable 55 run victory over Barbados on Monday in the regional Najiko One Day tournament. Charles, who hit 12 fours and 7 sixes, led the United Islands to an impressive 374 for six. The innings is a record for the highest individual score in regional one day competition. As soon as Ambrose uh, contributed an unbeaten 45, and skipper Liam Sebastian also scored 45, along with the seven by opening batsman Devin Smith. Uh, Barbers in reply reached 319, all out in 49.2 overs. Uh, skipper Kevin Stout led the way with an attack in 81, and there were also half centuries from Shy Hope 62 and Sharma Brooks 56. Uh, Western is opening batsman Craig Braffitt also made played well. He scored 38. There were three wickets for Delaran Johnson and two for the Aust winner Shane Schillingford. Yesterday there were also wins for the Ewood Islands and Trinidad and Tobago in the competition. Rakim Conwall scored his maiden regional 100, 113, to lead the Ewood Islands to a 48 run victory over the West Indies on the 19 team. They scored 231, that's the Islands, 231 for 8, and then dismissed the young West Indies team for 183. Trinidad and Tobago, uh, meanwhile, they defeated Jamaica by 17 runs in their game, also in Trinidad. Uh, the Trinidad scored 232 with Darren Bravo striking 55, Dwayne Bravo 34, and Kieran Pollard 41. Riyad Emrit then bagged 5 for 56, his first fifer in regional cricket to help dismiss the Jamaicans for 215. Tell you what, the records tumbled as South Africa overwhelmed the West Indies by 148 runs to win the second one international in Johannesburg on Sunday. That game played at the Wanderers. A.B. de Villiers accounted for three of those records Risen to 149 from just 44 balls to record the fastest batting display in the game. In so doing, he raced to 50 of just 16 balls, which beat the previous best of 17 and 100 of just 31 balls, which also eclipsed the previous best of 36 by New Zealander Corey Anderson last year against the West Indies. South Africa piled up an impressive 439 for 2 in their knock, which came close to the best of 443 scored by Sri Lanka against the Netherlands. The, Liv the Villiers, who scored 149, which included 16 sixes, was one of three century makers, the other being Hashim Amla, 153 not out, and Riles Rousseff, 128. His 16 sixes was also a record in one day internationals. It was, also the, it was also the first time in one day international history that the first three batsmen at the top of the other scored centuries. West Indies in reply, they scored 291 for seven. Dwayne Smith striking 64, Dennis Ramdeen 57, Jonathan Carter 40, and Marlon Samuels 40. The original cricketers uh, must now regroup and win the third game on Wednesday if they have to have any chance of winning or drawing the series. They will certainly have to bowl much better in the upcoming game. In more cricket news, Australia have taken a 2-0 lead in the uh, Tri-Nation series, also involving India and England. That's been played off in Australia. After beating England in the opening game last week by seven wickets, they made it two wins in as many games with a four-wicket victory over India in the second game on Sunday. Rohit Sharma hit a century, but it was Mitchell Stocks who grabbed four for 63 that made the difference as India scored 260. The teams are using the games as a build-up to the ICC Cricket World Cup starting in February 14th in Australia and New Zealand. 
In football, we have started the build-up to the inaugural Gwena Allen's Women's Football Tournament scheduled for March in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. News from the Grenada Football Association, the GFA, is that the 30 players who were involved in friendly matches against Barbados and St. Vincent and the Grenadines around the Christmas holidays had their first training session last week, Saturday, at the Queen's Park. They are under the guidance of Coach Nat Simpson, who says that training will be held on weekends, building up to the competition. Coach Simpson is hoping to put a winning outfit together. Football presidents of the Grand Islands agreed to introduce the tournament after their meeting in St. Vincent and Grenadines last November to inspire greater participation of women's teams in regional and international competitions. In more football news, newly appointed local FIFA match officials recently received their badges and pins at the GFA Secretariat at the Queen's Park. Women's officials, referee Asha Wellington, the first to achieve the feat, and assistant referee Tia McIntosh are the first female officials to make the FIFA list. The momentous occasion was marked, marked the first time female appointments were made since the formation of the GFA back in 1924. Vice President and Chairman of the Women's Committee, Alan James, who presented the officials with their pins and batches, commended them for their hard work and dedication, and also encouraged them to continue reaching for the stars. He is hopeful that the officials will move on to also referee regional and international events. Assistant referee Quan Budd also received his FIFA badge after working for three consecutive years. Tell you what, the 17th edition of the annual Kentucky Fried Chicken KFC National Relay Meeting will be held at the National Stadium on February the 28th. Organizers are expecting another thrilling event as athletes seek to make their mark and grab the major honors for themselves, clubs, and schools. The 2015 meeting will be officially launched Wednesday, January 28th at Progress Park in St. Andrew from 11 o'clock in the morning. Since 1998, the National Relay Meeting has grown to become one of Grenada's biggest and most anticipated track events, attracting over 600 athletes and more than 4,000 fans. During the, during the 2015 KFC launch, they will provide 100 meals to students of five secondary schools to amplify the efforts of KFC and its global campaign to raise awareness for hunger relief. The schools are the St. Andrews and the Secondary School, SAS, Grenville Secondary School, GSS, St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, Grenada Christian Academy, and Magnon College. They are the schools earmarked for the meals at the lunch of the KFC National Relay Meeting on the 28th of uh, the month. And uh, finally, several sporting activities have been organized as part of celebrations marking the 41st anniversary of Grenada's independence on February the 7th. Women's cricket, an athletic sports meeting, a swim meet, a junior lawn tennis tournament, a table tennis competition, and a volleyball event have been organized to mark the occasion. The women's career tournament we played off on a Paris basis will run from January 17 to the 31st. The athletic meeting is slated for the Royal St. John playing field in Tantine, Saturday, January 24th, while the swim meet is at the Good Hope Swim Pool in Southeast St. George on Friday, January 23rd. The lawn tennis tournament is sponsored by Rubis, and that's scheduled from January 24th to February 6th at the Tantine Courts, while the tennis tournament is fixed for January 30th at the Public Workers Union Center in Tantine, that's table tennis. Uh, the other event, uh, the volleyball tournament, is to, to be played off on an inter-parish basis, is scheduled from January 17th to the 31st. Independence officials say that prizes and trophies are earmarked for the top teams and individuals. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites.